Welcome to Successful Philanthropy. I'm your host, Jean Shafiroff, and today's show is going to be a little bit different because today with us we have an award-winning writer. Her name is Geraldine Brown GM Blanco, and she's written a book about her life. Very interesting. In addition, Geraldine also is a life coach and a very fascinating woman. Mm -hmm. Geraldine, thank you very much for joining us today on Successful Philanthropy. And Geraldine, what is the name of your book? And can you tell our readers in a few minutes what it's all about? Certainly. Thank you for having me, Jean. It's really been a pleasure to be here at LTV. And uh, they've been very great, gracious to me. Um, We've done an audio book as well and recorded it here. But the name of the book is called Geraldina and the Compass Rose. And there is a story behind uh, the title. And it's about you, correct? It is about me. It's about a woman who is journey, uh, took her 30 years to find the love of her life. And 30 years is a long time. So I met So you my... mean you got married at 30. Oh, uh, no. <laughs> right. Exactly. Thank you. No, at 50, actually. Uh -huh. So I met my husband at 50 years old. But... Um, the story really takes you through the, the idea that I had faith and I knew that uh, there was a plan for my life. And when I had some stumbles and falls and things, my faith is what really carried me through. But I got that faith from my grandmother. And that's where the title of the book comes from. Her name was Rose, Rosaria. And she was, uh, you know, quite, quite the woman. She came from Italy over here. Um, settled in in Bridgeport, Connecticut initially, and then moved to the Bronx, and her name was Rosaria Gentile, and, or Gentile, G-E-N-T-I-L-E. But in the book, the, the idea of the compass rose is an actual navigation sign, and it comes full circle that my grandmother was like my guide through life. And something miraculous happens in the story, and really that's what jolted me to write the book. Yes, but before we okay. hear more about the book, I want to talk a little bit about the situation with marriage. It seems that less and less people are getting married today, and to me, that's fine. We have same-sex marriage. We have all sure. sorts of different marriages, and personally, you do what you want to do, And but it seems to me that people, every year, they're are maybe fewer and fewer marriages, and it seems to be that it's getting harder and harder for people to find the right person. And I'm wondering, mm -hmm. you're a life coach, what do you think? Is it that women today and men are fussier or they just don't want to have the uh, responsibility of having a partner and maybe of having a family? What are your thoughts on this? That's a great question, Gina. <laughs> I wasn't asked that one before. But honestly, um, for me, it was always something that I expected would happen. And I think it comes generational. You know, we came from a place where um, back in the 50s and my parents' generation, right, they got married young, they had children, the generations stayed next to each other. And I think over time, it's just kind of dissolving. I think it seems that um, more people have spread out throughout the world. It's a global place now. I mean, I think before there were, it, it was sought out to be different. Um, in the case of, of what I see when I'm coaching other people, it seems like everybody still wants to be with somebody. That love really is a center point. And what I like to bring out in the book that I believe in love and I believe that brings people together and it brings them together of all ages and it doesn't really matter race or religion or anything of that nature and I think people want to be loved so for me love in a marriage was the ultimate because I'm Catholic and I was brought up that way but for other people it's different and well I think all religions the idea of love is something important in all religions, whether you're Catholic or Jewish or Absolutely. Islamic or a Buddhist. And uh, mm -hmm. people need each other and want to be together. And it's hard sometimes to find the right partner, I think. And I guess you in the book describe some of the relationships you went through with yes. different men. Mm -hmm. I, I did read some of the book. I confess I didn't mm -hmm. have enough time before this interview to read the entire book. That's okay. but. Uh, there was one very interesting episode, and it was—it seemed like it was rather heartbreaking. 
uh, with one man, and from one man, I, you, then you had another beautiful relationship that seemed to fall apart because of maybe the person wasn't the right person. And as I look back on my life, I see the same thing. I had, uh, before I got married, and I've been married a long time, many relationships, and until I found the right one, well, I wasn't getting married. So uh, tell us a little bit about your journey and what you describe in the book, because I think it's really very important to mm -hmm. our women and our men and young people reading and, and watching this program to learn about your journey so that they will also have hope. Thank you. Uh, um, so I think it starts out as something that we've been all given a personality uh, special gifts, um, something that re resonates deep inside. I want to call it a soulful person, that we all have something of that nature in us. And so as a very young little girl, I always loved to love. And I felt like um, regardless if it was my grandmother or my parents or a dog, you know, animals or the nature. And the, the, what I take you throughout the book is this little girl who's growing up and she's learning through experience. And we, uh, we all can say that now, right? The older and the wiser we get. But, but I think there was also this drive and purpose. Like I knew that I was always going to do something big, you know, but I wasn't quite sure what it was. So I kept steadfast in my career. And when I felt it was time to move on, I wasn't going to let anybody stop me. So I had this moxie in me, you know, and I share stories of that. But I also share stories of this compassion that I have um, for people. And in my relationships, I just was always trusting, thinking that it was going to lead to the right thing, which ultimately for me would be to have my own family and to have children and to be with the one I love. And it just didn't happen. So I'm 20. That's my grandmother's would say, do you have a boyfriend, you know? are you getting close to getting married or something? And, and so I had this expectation. I was fortunate it wasn't pressured. Like in other words, it wasn't, there was something wrong with me in my family. You know, why didn't I get married at 20? But there was that underlining pressure that I felt. Then came 30s and then something very magical happened to me in my 30s. I met a man in an airport who kind of gave me some intuitive message and what did he say? He said three things that were pretty profound. One was never lose the little girl in me. And yes. to know me is that I'm very playful and I'm loving in that innocent way. Um, number two was I'm going to receive a gift. And the way he spoke to me, um, it, it felt like it, the gift wasn't maybe necessarily a material gift. Although I would like to think that maybe that would have been the case. A spiritual it gift. It was a spiritual gift of something that I was either going to give or get. And he explained it through a story of that his mother had this ability to receive gift hum, uh, receive gifts humbly, you know, at Christmas time. And I thought, I felt like I was going to receive a gift and I wanted to stay humble in that moment. And then the, the most important thing, and, and really, like I said earlier, what caused me to stop and write the book was that he told me that my grandmother had a message for me. Now, my grandmother was deceased already two years. So when I heard that, I felt it, and he even you know, acknowledged it, that she was close to me. Even though she was gone, she will always be very close to me. Um, so I went home that day after I was stuck in an airport and I met the stranger, like I said. And when I went home, I wrote it all down because I knew it was it was monumental. It was something very important for me. Well, this and man touched your heart. I did. And I wrote down that he was my guardian angel and that my grandmother sent him. And in my diary or journal, whatever you want to call it, I mean, it was, uh, I couldn't, re it was 2000, oh no, it was 1995 in June. And um, I said, my, I, I met my guardian angel and guess who sent him? You know, Rosaria Gentili. And 25 years later, the message came through that he said, you know, my grandmother had a message for me. And it has to do and with And what my, was that message? Well, it was to say that my husband, Mark Jim Blanco, was the right one. And it was time. And all that time, I never lost hope or faith because she inst we made the meatballs. We said the rosary. You know, <laughs> we did a lot of praying together. And... Um, and and in the hard times, I didn't, 
I didn't falter. That's what gave me the strength to move forward and in my business career because it gave me the guts to move forward because if I felt that I was being led, um, that intuition, then I took the chances and well, it excelled me in my job. So. Well, that's Thank very you, nice. So I think uh, this man and then your grandmother and never giving up, I think, is a message maybe that comes through in this book where a lot of people, they keep looking year after year for the right person. And it's very difficult to find the right person for many, many people. So many people, they just don't end up getting married and you very much wanted to be married, but you wanted to be married to the right person. And so you never gave up. And I think what I'm hearing is that it's a, a book of hope. It is. And, and you want to encourage others never to give up and to always have hope. And what a beautiful story. And how long have you been married now? Four years. We were married in August of 2016. It took me two and a half years to write the book. And, and I, I read parts, and mm -hmm. I thought it was very well written. Did Thank you have you. a ghostwriter? I had some people help me, absolutely. Yes. Um, we, we sat down. So I did a lot of the writing, and mm -hmm. really where they came into play was helping me put it into the story format. And like I said in the very beginning, I always saw this as a movie or a visual story. Um, and I understand you have someone writing a screenplay for the Yes. Yes, we're book. really excited. For a movie, I mean. <laughs> yes, we have a producer, we have uh, directors, we have um, a lot of people very interested right now um, that will collaborate and fine tune it and then we'll put it out to market. So it'll be independent at this time, unless Hollywood wants to pick it up, of course. Well, that's exciting. And now you know this uh, uh, show is about philanthropy mm -hmm. and how we do things in our lives. We either volunteer or even acts of kindness can be uh, conceived of as philanthropy, and, and then how we might give. And so I'm assuming through the writing of this book that you are giving a gift, the gift of you and the gift of your story mm -hmm. to help other people. And I understand your husband is, you both have a small yacht mm -hmm. and that you take couples out. I don't know if this is couple Oops. therapy or, uh, but it's a very interesting oh, business. Oh, the Geraldine of Charters, you picked up on that. Um, we've kind of put that aside for now because of the book and the movie and all of that other. But yes, my initial um, in, intention along with the book was to to bring people out on the water where they feel safe and secure and they have the negative ions, which makes them relaxed, to talk about where they want to take their life. So the life coaching and the planning um, was really a venue, having the yacht and the boat and bringing people out there, as opposed to putting somebody in an office or sitting you know, inside of a, uh, you know, a, a retreat center or something like that. It's, it's another venue. and It's a very uh, peaceful place, the sea. I mean, it can be a very it's tumultuous beautiful. place oh if you're gosh. in the middle of a storm, but when it's a beautiful day, the sea is absolutely beautiful. So part of the life coaching is to bring people out on the sea if they want to, or is there two separate businesses? Well, no, it's one business, um, but like I said, uh, we have a home that's out on the Long Island Sound in Connecticut, mm -hmm. and it's set up really to to also bring people to the water. So I have an office there. So it was like twofold. We can we can conduct business out on the boat or we can, you know, go to a beautiful view room, which I had, you know, set up in, in my home. Um, but, you know, there was one thing I wanted to comment before when you had asked about the journey. And, and this comment was when you do that kind of work, you also have to look within to see what are the things that I can do to improve my own character. Always. Or to be, right. So I do take you through that process in, in my story. You know, there were things I didn't like about myself and I felt like I couldn't find love unless I, I kind of cleaned the slate for certain things. And I think that's an important message too, to not give up hope for yourself that you could always make a Change and become a better person. Correct. And you invite the reader to explore that ability to mm -hmm. look within and, and maybe change things. Is that what you're saying now? I think that's oh, yeah, a beautiful sure. thing. It is. And, you know, along the lines of philanthropy, my intention wholeheartedly is I have another book ready 
Yeah, well, right? not ready, but it's getting ready. Um, and so the proceeds from a movie and from the book and from any of my work going forward is going to offer me the opportunity not just to give the gift of time, but also to give the gift of of you know, writing that check to a, these causes that I believe in. Or giving a percentage of proceeds Correct. of the book sales or movie sales to a favorite charity. And along the lines of taking people out on the water, I wanted to mention uh, to our uh, listeners that there is a charity called Sa Sailing Heels. Mm -hmm. And I have a number of friends involved. It's a beautiful charity. And what mm -hmm. Sailing Heel Heels does, that's Sailing Heels, they take cancer patients out on the seas and the people involved, the people who own the boats and, and, and the people who, um, the sailors, they take people out and it's a form of therapy and they operate in 22 different ports in the United States. And I think this is something that I thought was just so beautiful. And I thought I would bring it up because you have a boat. And I thought, if you'd like, I could try to connect you and your husband to Sailing Heels. Would love that. And, and you, you might find people, like-minded people, who are involved in um, helping the community at large. And, and you're doing great things with your your book, the message of your book, the message of your life coaching, mm -hmm. and and this would be adding another dimension, which would be fascinating. And we are um, here all to work together mm -hmm. and try to find new ways to um, make this world better. Right, and right sure. now in the middle of this pandemic, it's very difficult for so many people because there are so many challenges that most of us have never had before. And with so many millions of Americans, at one point we had 38 million Americans out of work, as you know, and mm -hmm. people on bread lines and, well, not quite bread lines, but food pantry lines and all the hardship of people losing jobs. And, and so to write a book that gives people hope mm -hmm. and then to do the life coaching, which is also helping people during this very difficult time is all very special and then just to hear the story of your life and how your grandmother was so instrumental and then a complete stranger mm -hmm. and then your husband who's sort of come into your life at this age which is so nice and 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 brings hope to so many different people and now moving forward what is this new book about the, the new book is really a continuation of where I leave you off here. And, um, you know, life throws a lot of curveballs. And at the end, sure does. In, in the <laughs> epilogue, I, I explained that I, three months after I was married, I was diagnosed with a pituitary brain tumor. And oh, so I had very surgery. Sorry. No, that's fine. Um, but th that's the irony. You know, here's this fairy tale story, right? Mm -hmm. And I close and people are like, oh, I didn't want it to end because it was mm -hmm. such a happy ending. And it continues on. It is still a happy ending because I could have been in that situation without my husband, right? And that would have been a very different. Mm -hmm. So it's called Cushing's disease. And it is probably something that I will hopefully be an advocate for other people that are going through that. And um, again, it's, it's about not losing hope because this is what you know, we have to go and find that, that place within us and know that um, there will be people that will come and help you. And, you know, there's a chapter in there called um, All Saints Day, and I, I quote Saint Teresa, Mother Teresa. Mm -hmm. I had a very interesting thing happen to me, and um, she was being interviewed, and I caught the interview, and the interviewer had asked her, um, how do you do what you do? And she said, there are those that can and those that can't, and I can. And I kind of take in that philosophy that if I can, I will. And if it means, uh, you know, I had a, a friend, 82 years old, she, her son was taking care of her, he died during this pandemic, and she had no one to feed her. So I set up the pea pod and, you know, some, Lovely. and you know, it's just, if you can, you have to. It's just, I agree when you have you know, the, wherewithal to be of help to other people. It's not a question of, well, should I? You just have to. And I absolutely think you should write that second book mm -hmm. because I think it will give a lot of hope to people who might 
be going through something similar to what you're going through uh, now, and I'm sorry you've had to go through this, but you know, you write a good book. Thank you. And you've gotten all these awards, and I have a feeling you're going to write a second book, and then a third book, and then a fourth book, and, and even if they don't become movies, the fact that you're writing something to help other people, it's a God-given gift. It's a great gift, and um, I, I would only just encourage you to keep doing this because there's mm -hmm. a path carved out for you and you're following that path. That's right. Thank and you. I know you believe that God has done this for you and of course not everybody watching this show believes in a God and I'm not here to convince anybody of anything but maybe if they read your book they may feel differently. I don't know I, but I, I, you have a message of hope and right. I think that's really exactly. what your book is all I about. I have dear friends of all faiths and we have and a so soul we have a soulful connection and I, I believe God comes in the form that you believe in. So if it's what if it's Buddhist, if if you're Hindu, if you're a Catholic, it doesn't matter. It, to me it's it's the it goes back to believing in love and doing the right thing for others. If you can, do it. And accept the good gifts that um, come when you can't. Or you. And so, you know, hopefully that all the people um, that read the book feel inspired in more than one way, you know. Yes, and I believe that everyone on this planet is mm -hmm. entitled to worship as he or she so chooses to worship. Sure. And regardless of the religion, and so I think, but I think most people feel that way, and I ultimately believe we're all worshiping the same Almighty or Divine. whatever. But again, there are people that just believe that we're here and then we die, and that's the end. And I'm not here to convince anyone of anything but else. There's some and fun miracles. Miracles do happen, miracles I believe. Happen. But again, Gee, not everyone believes fun. that. <laughs> they're fun to believe in. Uh, and it's it really it's uplifting. Um, in my book, there's some fun, silly stuff that goes on when I teach little kids, and I just love the reaction. You know, it's is it magic? I don't know. You know, there's that thin veil between here and we don't know where, right? And we don't know, but um, I like to believe, like that little girl, you know, that there's something really special. Yes, and what do you see yourself doing, say, 10 years from now or 20 years from now? Do you ever look ahead? And, Absolutely, sure. And, and have you seen a path? or? I believe that you know I'm definitely going to be out there serving in some way. Um, I would like to have my own foundation as things progress. Um, I believe, Charitable foundation. Absolutely, yeah. Great. Oh, yes. um, I was involved in the Ms. Foundation. I was the first one to execute that, and um, that was a glorious time. Uh, initial initiative where you take your kids to work, but it started out take your daughter to work to um, influence the young people to give them opportunity to see what jobs are out there. And I love uh, youth development and I've always seemed to gravitate towards young people and even college age kids um, where I give them, you know, great stories on how you take to chance or how you have to kind of be quiet and lay low for a little while and, and, and also build their self-esteem, which I think is very much needed today, regardless of gender, you know, that people should feel good about who they are. No question. Believing in yourself oh. is so incredibly important. If you don't believe in yourself, right. it's very hard to achieve. So I see something molding in that or, you know, latching on to something that's very powerful right now or needs help because I'm... I was a marketing person, so I, I take things from good to great, and I would love to help any organization do that, you know, that feels, you know, the same way I do, too, towards um, the self-esteem and youth development. And, and I have a feeling if, if you continue writing and you remain um, as a life coach and get more involved in some of the philanthropic work you were doing earlier, you are going to create a platform for yourself that will enable you to do much more, and you're on your journey. Right. <laughs> I'm, I'm a, a working journey. philanthropist. I love it, right? And mm -hmm. as our viewers know, very often I say we can all be philanthropists, and how do we do that? Well, we can give our time, our knowledge, and then 
If we have resources, we absolutely must give our resources because right now there is so much suffering, especially because of this pandemic. And so getting back to our guest, Geraldine, we have just a little bit over one minute. What would you like to leave with the audience if you could leave them with three different points? What would they be? I kind of like the three points that I was given, but you know, I love that innocence. Don't lose the innocence and the playfulness because I know people are suffering, but you can be uplifting um, in, in a very small way. And I had um, an interesting, funny, quick little story. I was doing laundry, believe it or not, and I heard a ching, ching in inside the, the the dryer. And my thoughts at that time was, I really want to do something big. I don't want to do something small. I want to do something big. And when I came and opened up the dryer, I found a little penny. It was shrunk. And on the penny, it says, in God we trust. But my message to me, the way I looked at it, was that you have to start small and you can grow into something big. And so I think that's really my message. It, you don't have to come off the gate big. And I'm working towards it. It's been 30 years and I continue to work towards it. And I love that. Geraldine, I can't let you go until you tell me who you want to play you in your movie. Jean, I'm not supposed to be talking about these things right now, but okay, so my husband and I have this big dream plan. We thought maybe we should have Brad Pitt and Jennifer Aniston play us because you know of their situation. Now they're both single and they're both in their 50s and who knows, but there's, has, there's gonna be a young Geraldine and an older Geraldine. So um, I like Shailene Woodley, she's lovely, or Drew Barrymore, or we have quite a few, but that would be the ultimate if we could bring those two back to the screen. What do you think of that? And together would be phenomenal. And playing your story, oh. I love it. Geraldine, thank you so much for being with us today, and I hope I see you soon. Thank you, Jean, for having me here. I really enjoyed my time. This concludes Successful Philanthropy. I'm your host, Jean Shafiroff, and I'll see you next week.